Hello and welcome back to another video. I pre-ordered the Sony a7 IV a few weeks ago and I wanted to make this video to explain why in hope that I could help someone else out there. If you've watched my channel at all, you'll know I shoot all of my content on the Sony a7 III, so everything I say in this video is coming from a happy Sony a7 III owner's perspective. Firstly, I wanna say that Sony absolutely nailed the a7 IV. It had a lot to live up to and exceeded a lot of my expectations. So let's quickly run through those. What did I want to see in the camera to upgrade then? Well, I wanted a better sensor, better ergonomics, better screens, both EVF and touchscreen, as well as the ability to shoot 4K60 in 10-bit color. Those were my requests when I filmed the Sony a7 IV rumors video a little while back. The Sony a7 IV gives us that and a hell of a lot more. So why didn't I pre-order it the day it was released? That's a valid question and with any big purchase, I really like to deliberate and consider it. And to be honest, the salon kind of distracted me away from the whole camera world. I was fully invested into that. So I missed the initial release. I miss all like the, the later part of all the rumor stuff. Uh, so if it wasn't for that, I'd probably have the camera in my hands right now. But it did give me a couple of months to actually sit down and think, do I actually need another camera? Do I need to upgrade? So I sat on it for a few months watched all the reviews and tutorials, you know, the, all the usual stuff. And the more I watched, the more it impressed me. There were so many little things that I didn't even consider was a priority or something that would like sway me to upgrade a camera actually made a hell of a lot of sense in the end. The key things that ultimately swayed the decision for me was the flip out screen with the new menu from all the newer Sony bodies, the 33 megapixel sensor, the better ergonomics, from the Sony a7R4, the ability to record 4K60 in 10-bit color, which I've already mentioned, the new autofocus features derived from the A1, real-time eye tracking in all modes, which is huge, as well as the new color science from the a7S3 and s Tone, which I am excited to use. And lastly, that little mode dial on the top was like really important. I was, I was like, I was blown away by that. So I preset setting my camera for like mode one and mode two which will be like 4k 24 and uh, 1080 120 fps and i've been caught out no end of times when i switch from video to photo and my picture profiles and stuff like that are still on the camera and i've taken like 10 or 15 shots and i've got a picture profile and i'm like why do these colors all look weird so that is again a massive bonus however it is not all sunshine and rainbows there are a few little drawbacks or annoyances it only shoots 10 fps in compressed raw i have delved a little bit deeper into this and looked at some of the raw files like compared against each other like uncompressed raw and compressed raw and the files don't look too dissimilar the shadows are a little bit noisier in the compressed raw files but really once i get my hands on it i'm going to do my own test and i'm going to see it for my own eyes and if you want to see that video i'll definitely do that the next one is 4k 60 has a 1.5 times crop so basically shoots the super 35 mode again i can see why people get annoyed by this if they shoot a lot of their video work on prime lenses whereas i don't i always shoot on a zoom lens and i have the lenses to compensate for that so it doesn't really affect me too much and lastly there has been a lot of overheating rumors or videos where certain people said they've got the overheating warning and other people said they're having. Again, not something I'm too worried about. If it's an actual problem, I'm sure Sony will give us a firmware update which will solve it, just like Canon did with the R5. A few added bonuses that might interest you. The A7 IV has the same processor as the A1. This is gonna increase buffer speeds and readout speeds. This is something that not really important to me too much because I never ran into any issues on the A7 III. However, the, the videos and the tutorials and whatever I have watched, like the camera to turn on and to get your initial shot is like so much faster, which is again a bonus. It's also gonna have a full size HDMI port, which is actually really good. Um, if you've got a Sony a7 III, you'll know the micro HDMI always feels like it's gonna break and I never trust it. It's just so loose and wobbly. So to have a full size HDMI is a nice little upgrade. So I've also added breathing compensation, which is basically the camera compensates for the focus breathing on certain G Master lenses. Not something I'm worried about because I don't own any G Master lenses. And variable shutter, something that I am very interested in is gonna make shooting at higher frame rates and getting rid of that light flicker so much easier. 
and it's available in both photo and video mode. I know I'm saying all this without physically testing out the camera myself and I'm basically going off what I've seen, heard and read. However, I have spoken to a few people in the UK that have actually got a full working production model and there's very little complaints coming from those people. One even went as far to say that it was the best camera he had ever used and he does video content creation as a career and has access to cameras such as the Blackmagic Pocket 6K. To summarize, the Sony a7 III is still a more than capable camera. However, the Sony a7 IV offers so much more to the modern hybrid shooter. The a7 III was the hybrid king, has the a7 IV taken its crown? I'll leave that one with you. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you lot in the next one. Peace.